President Obama brought with him an offer of $1 billion to boost the presence of U.S. troops and equipment in Central and Eastern Europe in the face of Russian threats. I'm starting the visit here because our commitment to Poland's security, uh, as well as the security of our allies in Central and Eastern Europe, is a cornerstone of our own security, and it is sacrosanct. In April, the United States sent the first of a few hundred troops to Poland as a symbol of that commitment, but it was far short of the 10,000 Poland wants based permanently here. Poland welcomed Mr. Obama's offer, but Polish President Bronisław Komorowski said his country is boosting its defenses in light of Russian actions in the region. President Obama indicated he does not want a conflict with Russia. We are interested in good relations with Russia. We are not interested in threatening Russia. We recognize that Russia has legitimate interests in what happens along its borders and has a long historic relationship with Ukraine. But Mr. Obama said new sanctions are ready if Russia chooses to further destabilize Ukraine. The U.S. leader will join in Polish celebrations Wednesday to mark the Solidarity Movement's election victory and the end of Soviet-imposed communist rule. The United States supported the Polish people's struggle for freedom from Moscow's control then. President Obama hopes to reassure them that it remains committed to helping defend their freedom today. Luis Ramirez, VOA News, Warsaw. NATO has begun war games near Russia's border as tension simmers between the West and Russia over Ukraine. Nearly 5,000 5, troops and 800 military vehicles from 10 countries, including the United States, Britain and Canada, are taking part in the Sabre strike exercises near the Latvian capital Riga. The Pentagon says it has deployed two nuclear-capable B-2 stealth bombers to a British airbase to join the maneuver later. Russia objected to the war games, which moved to neighboring Lithuania on Tuesday, calling the move an act of aggression. The Russian foreign minister criticized the Western military bloc's expansion towards the Russian border. He said such moves are, quote, counterproductive. The exercises will continue until June 20th. Denmark, Finland and Poland are some of the other NATO members that are taking part. Well, to discuss this more, let's go to Atlanta and talk to uh, Jim W. Dean, Managing Editor of Veterans Today. Welcome, sir. Uh, Mr. Dean, uh, NATO, uh, we have uh, NATO in the United States accusing Russia of provocation whenever Moscow uh, delivers troops along its border. But, I mean, uh, is it, isn't NATO's troop buildup uh, an act of provocation in itself? Well, it's an act of provocation uh, historically <clears throat> because when the uh, former Soviet Union broke up, and they wanted to demilitarize the situation and chill out the Cold War, uh, they made very, very strong agreements that uh, uh, Western Europe was never going to be uh, put in a situation of having to choose East versus West, uh, particularly uh, for a military situation. And of course, uh, we can see now that the West had no intentions of uh, actually following through on that, and they've just nibbled away uh, trying to push their way back to the uh, uh, the Soviet border, which obviously uh, can only be for some type of offensive purposes. And then number two, you've got these poor Baltic countries. I don't know why they want to be cannon fodder in some type of future uh, dispute or fight between Russia and the U.S. because uh, with the NATO bases there, uh, if anything ever really started, they would have to be taken out and destroyed right away, which is exactly why the U.S. is doing these uh, uh, drills, because uh, they would soak up Soviet missiles, Soviet troops to have to guard their flank there. Uh, and you would think that the Baltic companies, uh, countries would be smart enough to figure this out, but obviously they haven't. Uh, earlier we had uh, the French uh, foreign minister dashing the hopes of Ukraine uh, in its hopes to join the European Union. I mean, uh, what would this mean for Ukraine? I mean, how, how much trust and confidence can Ukraine have in the West's support? Well, uh, again, the uh, Ukraine got way ahead of the game because way back uh, when the EU made their counteroffer, uh, it was nothing more than to start a process to integration. And I remember when I did a little initial reading on it, uh, they were talking about a 10-year process for them to be ready to do it. And, and of course, and, and uh, Ukraine was desperate for cash and they wanted money, which the EU uh, was not willing to do, and that threw them back into the hands of the Russians, 
because they knew they could continue to get the gas subsidies. So the whole thing has just been crazy, and it's very, very dangerous. It's uh, brinks, brinkmanship leadership, which is very dangerous, and, and uh, there's been no attempt to get any kind of a public approval over this strategy whatsoever. And so at the end of the day, what is the likelihood of a military escalation in the Ukrainian region, and, and of course, what would the consequences be? Well, it's not likely in that everybody says they don't want to do it. Uh, it's just pressure typically to help out in negotiations and when they sit down and do some horse trading. Uh, but history has shown us what happens is uh, some event pops up. Uh, we know their, their false flags are very, very sophisticated today. Uh, intelligence agencies uh, have tremendous capabilities for starting some type of an event, make it look like somebody else had, had uh, done it and blame it on somebody else, which then gives uh, the other side uh, the ability to retaliate. So it's very, very dangerous for all of the rest of us. And we should complain like heck to all of the governments that are involved in escalating tensions like this. Indeed. Well, we'll leave it there for the time. Many thanks there to Jim W. Dean, uh, Managing Editor of Veterans Today from Atlanta. As always, thanks for your thoughts. Sir.